Despite a recent win against Liverpool, I think it's pretty clear that Manchester United are a club in a lot of turmoil currently. I say currently, but it's been the case for the last few years from top to bottom there's a disconnect at the club and something needs to be done. So in today's video, we'll be doing a Manchester United rebuild in the hopes of bringing them back to their former glory. Hello everybody, I'm Jake and today we're going to be rebuilding Manchester United using FM22 in the hopes of winning them not just league titles but hopefully some European glory too. In this video we've got plenty to get into to rebuild Man U. We won't be managing the day-to-day -day matches, operations, training, all of that stuff but instead we'll be focusing on the transfers, the staff developments at the club and also the improvement of facilities and general club structure. We want to bring the most out of this club and to do so we're going to stick to some strict club visions. Now the board want us to develop young players and also also play entertaining and attacking football which is something we will aim to do but I've put some self-imposed club visions on as well. I want to really manage this transitional period and make sensible buys for the club. Over the course of these few seasons we'll be getting rid of the high earning players and moving them on even if it's at a price cut to what Manchester United originally paid for them and bringing in some smart sensible business. So we're ready to get into the rebuild but before we do I want to ask you guys if you could show your support on the channel by hitting the like button if we can hit 100 likes that would be amazing. Subscribe if you haven't already as we try and hit 9,000 subscribers. Check out the Discord linked in the description as well as my second channel and drop a comment on who you'd like to see us rebuild next on the channel. So it's time to get started. The facilities are actually in a pretty good place at the start of this season and the staff situation is actually pretty good. Now there is an issue in certain areas, for example, the director of football in these key positions, he's not great. I mean, judging player ability and potential is decent, but the negotiating isn't the best. And you'll see that based on some of the prices that Man U have paid for players in recent years. But overall, the staff situation won't need too much work, but the one thing that will is the squad. Now I've used an updated database here so we do have the likes of Christian Eriksen, Casemiro at the club as well as who else did they bring in? Malasia, he joined recently, Lissandro Martinez is also at the club and we've got rid of the players that have also left this year. Now in this first season I won't be doing any transfers as Manchester United have already done them but this squad is actually a much better squad than how they're performing on the pitch in my opinion. They've got some decent players in every single area and I think with a few key acquisitions and some key key sales too, we can really turn the club around. But what kind of tactic are we going to be playing? We're going to be using a 4-3-3 Gagan Press style tactic. And whilst that will need lots of work rate and energy, which often Manchester United players haven't shown in recent years, we will be bringing in the right candidates for this squad to do the best job possible. If we allow the game to pick what it believes to be our best 11 when everybody's fit, we're looking at a team with David De Gea, Luke Shaw, Rafael Varane, Harry Maguire, Diego Dallo, Casemiro, Eriksen, Fernandez, Sancho, Rashford, and Ronaldo, which on paper does look like a very good team, but we know in real life they don't work too well together. They don't complement each other. Realistically, I'm looking to move a large majority of these players on, but for the first season, we'll stick with the squad that we've got, see how they get on, and then we'll really put our stamp on the squad, make some transfers, and get into the exciting part of the rebuild. And it's a fantastic year compared to what we might have expected. Our Manchester United side finishing third in the Premier League table, 80 points on the board, it's still a pretty significant gap between us and the top of the league and where it needs to be done, but it looks like none of the other clubs, Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs, really turned up this year with Wolves getting fifth spot. And it's Brentford who have got the seventh place spot. Brighton, Fulham and Southampton are the teams to be relegated, but we're only focused on our team right now. And a third place finish is brilliant because it gives us a Champions League springboard. In our other competitions, both English Cups, we got knocked out by Liverpool in the later stages. And in the Europa League, we were runners up. So let's see how that went. We've won 11-0 against Crystal Palace at one point. That is a joke. Cristiano Ronaldo with three, Martial with five, Rashford with two, and Eriksen with one. What a game that was. 11-0. That's crazy. But um, yeah, we've been doing pretty well this season, it seems. Not keeping right up at the top, but having a good year. And it started to tail off as the season came to an end. It was Napoli that we lost to in the Europa League final. A penalty shootout defeat. And some of our players really didn't perform on that day. And there's work to be done. Overall, I think most Manchester United fans would take that. They would have wanted to win that Europa League final. But 
as a start of a base for me to build up from, that's not too bad, but there's certainly a lot of transfer work that I want to get done, so let's get right into it. Our first sale of the second season here at Manchester United was Phil Jones. Finally, the long-standing servant of Manchester United back from the Fergie days has left. We actually got £6.25 million from Brentford. He is actually a half-decent player in Football Manager. I think Brentford have got themselves a decent player, but we're happy to move him on and get some cash in for him. The same goes for Eric Bailly. At the time of recording, he's linked with a move away from Manchester United, but it's not finalised yet, so I didn't remove him from our squad, but he has left this year. He's moved to Lyon for £10 million. United Academy product Axel Twanzebi has moved on. The Congolese international is 24 years of age now. He looks like he's never going to be a consistent starter for Man U and arguably might not be good enough to even be a squad level player if we're trying to compete on multiple fronts across the course of a few seasons, so we decided to sell him. He's left to Tigres out in Mexico for £10.25 million and we're slowly building up our transfer balance. With Malasia and Shaw at the club, Alex Telesh didn't really get a chance in a United shirt last year and we've decided to move him on. Celtic were interested, £14.5 million took him to the Scottish Giants. And our final major sale was Aaron Wambasaka leaving to join Tottenham Hotspur for £35 million. I actually think that's a very good deal for us. Last season, he did play not that often, not that well with one assist in 21 appearances. I think £35 million recouping most of what Manchester United played on him. It's actually a great deal and I think we've done Tottenham a little bit dirty there, but we will certainly take that money and reinvest it back into our squad. He's not a bad defensive fullback by any stretch, but in terms of what we're trying to do in this tactic, he isn't the man for this side. With Alex Telles leaving, we also let Malasia go out on loan to develop a little bit because in the football manager world, he isn't great, but we decided as a backup to Luke Shaw and hopefully his eventual successor, Tyrick Mitchell of Crystal Palace, could be a good signing for us. We bought him for £31 million and whilst his star ratings might not look amazing, I'm not too bothered about them. If you don't know, star ratings are really misleading in Football Manager, but in terms of a left back who's got exactly what he needs to play in a system that I'm looking for, he's English as well, and he would actually be a sensible purchase for Manchester United, a player with a lot of potential who works hard for his team and rarely lets Crystal Palace down. I think Tyrick Mitchell could be a great backup and hopefully the eventual successor to Luke Shaw. One thing to note as well, you might see we have this little pencil icon up here that allows us to use the in-game editor. We use that purely to bring over Casemiro. My transfer update didn't have Casemiro in yet, so I used the editor to bring him in, but I haven't used it for anything other than that. So don't worry too much about the fact that that's up there. I felt like our midfield needed a big boost, so we decided to sign Yuri Tielmans from Leicester City for £38 million. He's a very good creative player who can play a variety of roles in that midfield, classed as a world-class midfielder, good of both feet and good in a variety of areas, a great passer of the football. And whilst we do already have three very good midfielders in Eriksen, Fernandez, and Casemiro, there's not too many backups outside of those options. And Yuri Tielmans will not only help provide depth in those areas, but really challenge those players for a starting spot. So I'm very happy with the signing of him. And as great as Cristiano Ronaldo is, he's not getting any younger. And I wanted to sign a striker who would be happy to fill up that backup position until Ronaldo moves on. And I think this is a great signing for us. Giacomo Raspadori, the Italian 22-year-old striker, capped for Italy in this football manager save. Good with both feet, direct, very quick, likes to run with the football and has great finishing as well. Oh, good first touch. He had a good season out at Sassuolo last time out that convinced us to purchase him. The scouts were raving about him. I actually think for 40 million, this is going to prove to be a pretty shrewd signing later down the line. He's one that a lot of big clubs are looking at in real life, and I think he's a massive improvement to our squad. But we also signed one extra player, and that was Denzel Dumfries on a very good deal, in my opinion. With Aaron Wambasaka leaving, we needed an extra right back and preferably one that was better than Diego Dallo and Denzel Dumfries is the man that we chose from Inter Milan. I don't know the reasons behind it, but he was transfer listed at Inter Milan and £80 million was all he was going to cost. He did actually play a lot for them last year. Considering the price difference of what we got for wan compared to what we spent on Dumfries, it's an absolutely brilliant signing in my eyes and it's massively 
improve the squad. If we have a look at the depth in our squad, we've got right back options of Dallow and Dumfries, left back options of Luke Shaw, Mitchell and Malasia, who's out on loan. Centre backs, we've got Lindelof, Martinez, Maguire and Varane, and that's a position I'll look to improve in future seasons, I think. Midfield, we've got Fernandez, Eriksson, Tielemans, Casemiro, Fred, Donny van der Beek, and Scott McTominay. And then going forward, we have got Rashford, Sancho, Cristiano Ronaldo, Raspadori, and Martial to fill up those forward positions. Our work is by nowhere near done. We need to get rid of loads of those high earners that aren't contributing very much to the club. We need to replace half of these players still, and we will do that, but we're not going to be able to do it all in one window. We've got to be sensible, and I think we have signed some good players for this Manchester United side, and it leaves our best 11 now looking like this. Dumfries comes into the side, who wasn't there last year. Tielemans does as well, so that's two major improvements to our best 11, and overall, these signings have massively improved our squad depth but will it improve our performance in season two? Can we beat 80 points? Can we win any cup competitions? Let's forward into the future and find out. And here we are, a very strange year actually, because we finished third with less points than last year. So in theory, we've took a step backwards, but the gap between the top clubs has got a lot shorter now. We're only seven points off the league leaders in Manchester City, one point away from second place. The goal difference is are a lot closer too, but because these big teams have been losing more, it's meant the gap between the first and the sixth place teams is a lot smaller than it was last year. This isn't going to be easy to win the Premier League, it never is in these rebuilds, but it looks like we could have a potential to get there if we keep improving the squad. It looks like Sancho's had a brilliant year with 21 assists, Raspadori also a fantastic 33 goal return in all competitions, we'll have a look at that in a second, but how did we do in those other competitions? And okay, this is actually quite interesting. It's slightly disappointing, but also good in another sense. Uh, we finished runners up in the FA Cup, so at least we got to a final, but also runners up in the Champions League. Now, it is disappointing that you lose both finals. Good that we got there. That could have been two big trophies for us ticked off straight away. But I'm sure the Man U fans will be a lot happier with these performances. How were we heartbroken though? What happened? Who did we lose to? Here we go. We lost 2-0 to Liverpool in the FA Cup final with Darwin Nunes and Joel Matip getting the better of us. And it looks like most of our players had an absolutely terrible game. And then we lost a Champions League final to Real Madrid. Vinicius Jr. getting the winner. And under our leadership so far, we've got to a Europa League final, a Champions League final and an FA Cup final. It's just a shame we've lost all three. Hasn't really gone too well for us in that sense. But we're getting better and at least we're sniffing around those competitions. We've had some fantastic performances this year with Ronaldo scoring 27 goals as our best performer. Raspadori got 33. Varane was also a brilliant player, as was Sancho. Dumfries had a great year. Fernandez, Eriksson, even De Gea and Luke Shaw, who would have fought it? And Scott McTominay as well, still chipping in to that Manchester United squad. But with only four appearances for Fred, it looks like the days of McFred at Manchester United are over. In terms of poor performers though, we've got Tyrick Mitchell, Anthony Martial, Donny van der Beek and Casemiro. None of them are on terrible ratings other than Tyrick Mitchell, who looks like he's had a very sorry time of it at Manchester United. I do think it'd be a good buy for Manu in real life, but it looks like football manager isn't reflecting that too well. He's barely starting, so he certainly needs some development over the summer. Hopefully, as he starts to reach a bit more of that potential, he'll contribute to the squad a little bit more but right now, that does seem like a pretty wasteful sign-in. Everyone else, though, is on fire, so we'll take three out of four so far. So without further ado, let's get into our third season of transfers here at Man U. Okay, here we are, the start of season three. Our transfers are done, and I think we've had a great window. Let's start off with the sales, with Donny van der Beek leaving the club for £20.5 million. Pounds. He's gone to Southampton. Anthony Alanga has gone to Arsenal for £20 million, pounds, which I think is good business on our end, he was never actually used by our assistant manager over the course of these last couple of years. And I think 20 million is actually a pretty good deal. Some sales I wasn't aware of that the director of football must have handled. Ted N. Mengi has gone to Brentford for £7 million. Pounds. I don't know why they spent so much on a player who looks like this, but you know what? Go for it. Mengi and Phil Jones at the back for Brentford. Who would have thought it? And this guy I have never heard of. I don't even know if he's a Manchester United player in real life. Willie Camboala, he has left the club for £6 million. We apparently signed him for 2.5. Is this a signing man you have made in real life? Or is it maybe a director of football signing? I'm not sure, but he has moved on for a pretty big fee. Other notable sales include Brandon Williams to Galatasaray for £3 million. Victor Lindelof 
to Wolfsburg for £10 million. You can see we're really trying to clear out some of this dead wood now. Anthony Martial leaves to Lyon for £10.5 million. We get rid of a very high earner at the club with him going. And finally, Diego Dallo has left to Dynamo Moscow for around £15 million. He's gone to the Russian divisions, didn't play as much last year with Dumfries arriving. It's a goodbye to the Portuguese international, but we have made plenty of very good signings in my eyes. You've obviously saw Denzel Dumfries, but since then we've bought in a couple of very good signings. Mohamed Kamara from RB Salzburg was another good midfield option who I felt suited our team quite nicely in terms of that hard working aspect. He can play in a few of the roles that we use as well. The Marlian 23 year old still has room to grow and in the center of midfield actually comes in as one of our better options. So I think he'll be perfect in terms of squad depth. So I'm very happy with the shrewd signing of him for only 18 million. Now with all the sales that we made and the transfer budget we did have, it allowed us to spend a big chunk of money and we bought Michael Elise for £60 million. The exciting Frenchman had a couple of decent years out for Crystal Palace, having signed for them from Reading in the Championship, but I actually think he's going to be a great option on both flanks, and he might even allow Sancho to come over to this left-hand side. I'm not sure he'll be ready for the first team just yet. The board also did want us to play entertaining football, and Michael Elise, if you've seen him play in real life, you will know he is perfect for that. We decided to use our Dallo money to buy a new backup right back, and we went for Youssef Atal. Realistically, I actually would have preferred to have kept Dallo, but he wanted to leave due to less game time. We didn't want him disrupting the squad, so we let him go and we brought through Yusuf Atal, who I think is going to be a solid backup for us. Very good in the attacking phase of the game. He's had some good seasons with Nice recently with nine assists last year and hopefully can provide some good competition for Denzel Dumfries. And finally, we have spent a big chunk of money on a new centre-back. Lindelof has gone. Maguire probably not up to it. We need the partner for Varane. And we've gone for Fikeo Tomori of AC Milan. The former Chelsea player joins us for £70 million. Pounds, and I actually think Manchester United fans would be buzzing with the signing of this guy. I really wish Chelsea had never let him go. I'm a Chelsea fan. Everyone knew he had potential. He just didn't fit into the squad at the time. And he was ambitious. He didn't want to be loaned out again. He wanted a proper move and fair play to him because he is absolutely adored in AC Milan. And you can see why, because he's an absolutely fantastic centre-back. Perfect physically, mentally and technically too. Defensively strong whilst good on the ball, quick. And he reads the game very well. An England international with plenty of caps. This guy is going to be a long-standing Manchester United centre-back. Last two seasons for Milan have been awesome. And I'm hoping he'll keep up this form in our Man U squad where our team is actually shaping up quite nicely. One thing to note as well, I completely forgot to say, but Ronaldo is now done. His contract expired. As good as he still is, I didn't want to renew it for a 38-year-old. I thought, you know what? We'll let him move on. We'll let him get on with life. And we'll let Raspadori have a chance up front as our starting striker to see how well he will do. So yeah, Ronaldo's gone. I think in real life, he might actually leave Manchester United this summer. But who knows? Our squad is now looking very very strong. De Gea and Henderson are still our goalkeeping options. We've got Dumfries and Atal at right back. Luke Shaw and Tarek Mitchell, who is beginning to develop at the club now. Our centre-backs are Martinez, Maguire, Varane and Tamori. We've got Casemiro and McTominay in the midfield with other options like Eriksen, Tielemans, Kamara and Fernandez. Going forward, we've got Elise and Sancho on one side. Martial, Rashford can play on the other side. So can Sancho and then up top, We've got Raspadori and Rashford can also play up front. We might need another striker backup going into next season. But for now, I'm putting all faith on this man up front and hoping he can have a great season again. 17 goals in the Prem last year. Our best 11 now looks like this with De Gea, Varane, Tamori Shaw, Dumfries, Casemiro, Tielemans, Fernandez, Alise, Sancho and Raspadori. So clearly um, Rashford isn't being considered good enough for this team. But wow, what a starting 11 that is. Very impressive. And we've got some great options on the bench. Rashford, Maguire, Martinez, McTominay, Eriksen, Tariq Mitchell, amongst many others. This is a great squad. Don't forget to like the video if you are enjoying and subscribe to the channel. It really would mean a lot. But anyway, let's get on with it. Let's see the end of the third season and how well our side did. And maybe the loss of Ronaldo wasn't a great idea because we've only finished with 70 points. 38 games played. It definitely hasn't been our best season, arguably the worst of our three so far. We do need some work done in the transfer window then, um, but the Premier League seemingly didn't go so well. Other competitions, though, look like they've gone fantastic. We've got two trophies in the bag now. The Carabao Cup is now ours. Awesome, but also mainly the Champions League after three seasons 
we have given Manchester United a Champions League title. Considering we've been in two European finals and lost before this, we finally got over the edge. We'll have a look at the game later. But it was a 1-0 extra time win against Bayern Munich. But that's great because it means if we don't win anything else in this video, it's, it's still a success. We won a Champions League and a Carabao Cup. We really care about that Champions League though. Let's have a look at who performed well, who was our star player this year. It looks like Bruno Fernandes is the main man at Manchester United with Ronaldo leaving the club. 26 goals and a 7.26 average match rating. But yeah, there's still some work to be done in this squad. Maybe a couple more stars in that starting 11 and we will be okay. Because I think we've got good depth. We just need those high quality first team players. You could argue left back might need some work. Um, is Casemiro still up to it? I'm not too sure. Eriksen's getting quite old now. So I don't know what we will do in the window. But there's certainly a job to be done there. But I want to check out this Champions League final. Um, I want to see who scored the goal, all of that stuff. Let's have a look. Um, Carabao Cup, who did we beat there? We beat Leicester 1-0 with Ericsson scoring after seven minutes. But here we go. We beat Bayern Munich in extra time 1-0. Um, who the hell is he? Who is Joe Hugill? Joe Hugill scored the winner for us in a Champions League final in the 119th minute. So he's a player that's came off the bench by the looks of it. Who? Who is this guy? I have no idea who this is. I was fully expecting a regen player. Clearly he's some kind of Manchester United youngster, um, but not considered anywhere good enough to be anywhere near the first team. I'm only assuming that our strikers had got injured and the assistant manager had to call up Joe Hugill as we didn't have any other options. What a moment for Joe Hugill. You never would have expected this coming into the video. Um, let's check out the goal. Hopefully it's a good one. I guess there was no other striker on the bench and Hugill just had to come on. Um, but come on, let's check out this goal. Here we go. 118th minute. Wow. Dumfries crosses it in and Hugo's just there at the back post for a tap-in header. He runs away. It went to VAR by the looks of it, but we'll take it. We have won a Champions League with a very, very unlikely hero. I still want to go for another season though. Can we compete for a Premier League title and actually get top two, maybe even an FA Cup? Whatever it is, we're going to give it one more season, see how we get on and see if we can win any more silverware. But a Champions League is a great great base to build up from. We've gone really heavy with a season four transfer window to try and build the best squad possible. We nearly even signed Joshua Kimmich, but to start off with, I forgot to say that Fred has left to join Nice on a free deal. That was actually last season, but we made some further sales. The big one being Luke Shaw. He has left the club to join Chelsea, 35 million pounds. He was great for us over the last few seasons, but I was ready to cash in. There was someone that I wanted and I really wanted some star quality at left back. I think we've certainly done that, but we'll show you him in a second. We did make a few other sales with David De Gea leaving the club on a free. Harry Maguire leaves to join Lille for £11.25 million. He was never really a consistent starter for us once we got into our second season or so. And I think even though he did cost us £80 million, we've just got to take whatever money we can, let him leave the club, get them wages off the books and rebuild with our fresh squad inspired by me as manager, of course. We needed to replace David De Gea. I wanted someone that could actually distribute the ball a little better too. And we found Lafont, who is the French goalkeeper who plays for FC Nantes out in France. And he's actually been in the second division for the last couple of years. He's been amazing, amazing in Ligue 1 and the second division. They didn't get promoted. We bought him. I don't know how no one had bought him before that when he was in the second division. But we got there and we have got ourselves a very strong goalkeeping option. So I'm very happy to bring him into the club. Loads less wages than De Gea too. And I actually think it's very good value for money. With Maguire leaving, I wanted another centre-back option, a third option, if you will, behind Varane and Tamori to easily come in for them guys and still be a top draw player. So we have signed Inter Milan Stefan de Vrij. The Dutch 32-year-old was on the transfer list having not played too much for Inter Milan last year. I can only think he fell out with the manager because he's been playing amazingly, so I don't see why they wouldn't be starting him. And I think 30 million is a great deal for what is a very well-rounded centre-back option. I mentioned I wanted some star power at left-back and we decided to break the bank, 82 million pounds for Canadian superstar Alfonso Davis. Now you might see he's on 300 grand a week, which is a lot of money, but it was all he was willing to accept, but we signed him from Giants Bayern Munich on my news end, it's a great commercial move because it will be big in Canada and we'll get all the Canadian fans watching Manchester United. But he is absolutely top class and I don't think there's a better option out there in that position. And I think he's going to be the perfect Manchester United player. He's been brilliant for years for Bayern and now we have signed him and I'm very happy with that. 
Our final transfer was one you probably did not expect. We have bought Alvaro Morata to Manchester United. I wanted a striker who'd be happy to be a backup. And no offence to the legend Joe Hugel who scored in the Champions League, but I wanted someone who could actually add some quality when he came on and would it be a massive detriment to the team. And Morata seemed like a decent option. £18 million, not many on the market for that value who has his pedigree. And we've brought him to the club in the hopes he'll just score five, ten goals a season when he's called upon. But um, I want to talk about Morata because he's a very weird transfer case. He's been to Real, Juventus in real life, then to Chelsea, then to Atletico Madrid, then to Juventus, back to Atletico Madrid, to some of the biggest clubs in the world. And then in the football manager world, he kept it up. Bear in mind, he's never really been a consistent starter anywhere for more than one or two seasons. He's now gone to PSG, where he did well, and now to Manchester United. I think he's played for every single big club. All he needs now is to join Barcelona or Bayern Munich, and he's pretty much completed the set. What a guy, Alvaro Morata. He joins a club, and I think our squad is now at a very good level. Just as a bit of a test before we simulated ahead, I wanted to see where Joe Hugel was, and he's actually been released. His contract was up, and he's now going to be joining... John Book. They're a team out in Korea. I mean, fair enough, but this man's just gone from Champions League glory to being let go on a free. <laughs> Pretty unfortunate. But you know what? Business is business, Joe. Thank you for scoring, but we need to move on now. And uh, maybe you'll go to one of the English clubs, who knows? But realistically, he's not the best striker in the world, is he? Here is our squad though for our final season, and I think this has been a very successful rebuild of Man U. Lafont is now our goalkeeper for the next 10 years or so. Davis is a great young option at left back who's also amazing with Mitchell as his backup. Dumfries and Yusuf Atal can really compete for the right back spot. Tamori and Varane is a perfect centre back partnership with De Vrij and Martinez as backups. You can't do too much better than that. We've got Casemiro and McTominay, Fernandez and Kamara, Eriksen and Tielemann. We've got Rashford and Sancho, Raspadori and Morata. Loads of other players as well. Michael Elise, we haven't spoke about for a little while. But what a player he's becoming. Look at those attributes now. A very, very good option for Man U. Taking a number seven shirt. Hopefully he can live up to it. But this is a brilliant squad. And maybe, just maybe, it can help us get closer to that Premier League title. And here we go. 2025, the end of our fourth season. And we have actually done it. We have won the title with Man U. West Ham were our closest challengers with 76 points. It's a massive fall off from Man City who end up on 71 despite smashing us by 18 points last time we got anywhere near that tally. We've won with 83 points which isn't the best you'll ever see by any stretch of the imagination. Five games lost including an away 5-0 loss to Liverpool, eight draws and then 25 wins so not too bad from us overall there. We won the European Super Cup, we won the Carabao Cup, got knocked out in the semi-finals of the FA but what a last few years this has been for Manchester United. We've developed massively as a club and just to look at some of our key performers in later years, Michael Elise had a brilliant brilliant season with nine goals and six assists in 26 appearances one of the best players we had this year. Davis was great, so was Varane. Raspadori hitting 35. Rashford with 29 goals. Bruno Fernandes with 11. The facilities are perfect too. Financially, we've got loads of money in the bank balance. In terms of debts and loans, this net debt was at about 500k when I started. They could use this balance to clear most of their debts anyway, so I'm very happy with this. Even the staff situation has got miles better as well, so I'm very, very happy. But let me know what you guys thought of this rebuild. Who would you have signed? What did you enjoy? Thank you guys for watching. If anyone's still with me to this point, it really does mean a lot. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button. Let me know who you'd like to see rebuilt next and I'll see you next time guys. So thank you and goodbye. <laughs>